Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. For today's video, it's going to be a walking video. I'm going to go walk along the Tachana Masilat Harakevit in uh, Jerusalem. This is the train track park. I'm going to be giving a little bit of commentary along the way from Wikipedia. Uh, but I want to try to do as much of it as I can. So I'm right here at where it starts, which is by the uh, first station complex. And I'm going to just start walking now. And I'm going to be walking uh, southward as far as I can today. So this is about four o'clock here uh, in the day, actually, in the bike lane here. And uh, so this is basically an outdoor amenity in Jerusalem. I'm going to read as I walk what it says about this place on Wikipedia. It's a really nice amenity. Um, and uh, goes through a bunch of different neighborhoods in Jerusalem. So it's currently, as we said, four. Sundown here is apparently, I just checked, it's like 5.30 thereabouts. So I have like an hour and a half. Uh, but I think an hour should do it. Train track park, reading from Wikipedia here. Train track park, Park Masila, is a rail, tra rail, tra rail trail urban park in West Jerusalem, featuring seven kilometers of walking and biking trails. The park follows the route of the Jaffa Jerusalem Railway from the old Jerusalem rain Railway Station, which is what's here on the left, near the German colony to Teddy Stadium in Malcha. The park is built over and incorporates in its design the original railway tracks installed in 1892 and used through 1998. It's quite uh, relatively new actually. The park has been noted as a symbol of coexistence in the divided city as it passes through Jerusalem and Arab neighborhoods and is used by residents of both. That's sort of true. It is the day when the Jerusalem municipality is uh, in a standoff with residents of Sheikh Jar. There's a family there who've been served the demolition notice. So I wouldn't read too much into coexistence in Jerusalem, but uh, you know, this is in theory intended for that. Here is uh, Habuteka, this is the bar here. And where I'm walking past now is uh, what's called in Hebrew the Tachanei Rishana, which is the first station complex. This is, as that, as that Wikipedia said, kind of intended as a coexistence venue, not only between Arabs and Jews, but also between the various other populations in the city. So there's some graffiti there. Well, I guess wall art is a better term for it that has a nun, it has a Orthodox Jew, it has a, uh, anyway, all denominations in the city, and there are some restaurants here open on Shabbat, uh, the Jewish Sabbath, so therefore it's kind of friendly towards um, secular Jews and, you know, non-Jewish residents of the city who may wish to access that. This is the recently arrived public bike scheme in Jerusalem, it's called Jerufun. I'm going to do my best to avoid walking right past people as much as I can when making this video just because I kind of feel a bit weird about pointing a camera at random strangers. I'm trying mostly to capture the scenery. Sometimes the people are the scenery. So anyway, this is uh, this is sometimes used as an ice rink. And this aspect here is a bicycle pass. You can actually rent one of the Jeru Fun bicycles or you can of course bring your own bike and bike along this, which is actually uh, a great amenity because in general Jerusalem is not such a bike friendly city. I'm getting into cycling at the moment myself and it's uh, a little bit precarious. So it's really nice that this exists. It would of course be better if uh, <coughs> the whole city were bike friendly, but slowly, slowly as they say in Hebrew, layat layat, uh, there's a guy on a bike. So we are walking now southbound so uh, where we are exactly is walking parallel to Derek Hebron which is Hebron Road I mentioned this in a few of my videos so we're paralleling that and we're going to come shortly to Twins which is a burger joint um, and on the right here there's actually a power station um, it's fenced off and it's got all these warning signs I don't know exactly what its significance is to the power network other than that that's what that is substation or something like that and uh, now this is just a car park for the first station complex. 
people walk their dogs here as well and you can see all along the walk relics of that original railway route and there's generally placards like this as well i'm going to stop to read a couple of them or skim a couple of them i can't do everyone because there's a lot of them this is arabic Started World War I, the track between Lod and Jerusalem was widened from 100 to 105 centimeters, the gauge of the Hijaz Railroad. The Hijaz Railway was the longest and most important rail line in the Near East, connecting Damascus to Medina in Hijaz and had a branch through Haifa and Akko, strengthening Ottoman rule in the region. The new wire gauge made it possible um, after the British conquered the area through the line pass, they operated it using captured locomotives taken as foils or barge in the railroads in Egypt and Sudan. That's interesting. So we'll see in a second, they've in long sections of this, uh, they have preserved the original railway. And in other sections like this, there isn't that. It's just kind of regular paving. Here's another one of these things. Here's the power station. Hopefully gonna get a small bit uh, brighter as we go southward. Um, so we're facing south. So this is, we're still going past or a parallel to Hebron Road. Then we're going to go, there's a section of it that's going to kind of cut through the German colony. Then we're going to go around the back of Talpios. Next we're going to go through Beit Safafa, which is where I was recently to record the Al Rahman Mosque, which is now also uh, slated for demolition because it was apparently constructed illegally, so that's another controversy going on at the moment here. Um, and that's as far as it went last time, so the last time I tried to do this walk to its terminus This is a bar called Hasilo Just a little bit of craft beer, there aren't so many bars in this part of Jerusalem But there are a few, nice little place and they've preserved an original grain silo by the looks of things I presume that's where it gets its name from uh, Here we go, so this is, I don't know if this is the original train track or an addition But it is a train gauge of sort So apparently there's a project in New York this is really modelled after another signpost. I'm not going to stop for this one. There's a monastery there on the right. So you see these around Jerusalem. On Hebron Road, there's one called uh, St. Clair Monastery. This is another one here. And that's on Bethlehem Road, which is running parallel to Hebron Road. Unfortunately, from a photography perspective, I'm currently walking pretty much into the sun, so there's going to be some glare in this footage. So we're going to be crossing over Bethlehem Road now. Uh, this is where I'm going. It's a pedestrian crossing, as far as I know. Should be a little bit better from a sun perspective. So that's Bethlehem Road there. It's smaller than Hebron Road, and it is the main thoroughfare through the residential neighborhood of Baca. What I was going to be saying earlier is when I tried to do this walk in the summer, I got as far, technically this goes down to Teddy Stadium in Malka as I read, but there was a huge construction site and the workers were like, you're not going through here. So I had to regrettably turn around. Never actually done the full walk, so if I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna go as far as I can, I might need to be a little bit more ingenuous about uh, Navigation along the route somewhere, but we'll uh, see how that goes So this as I said in the summer when I did this walk on Shabbat it would be Much busier you'd see people here having picnics in the screen space in the center of the park and uh, This time of week During the weekday most people are probably still at work uh, So there's less less people than you'd see on Shabbat. So this, we're transversing now through the German colony. There's these nice little art murals along the way too. German colony is like an upscale neighborhood. Baca is pretty upscale too. Baca is historically or traditionally more secular. One of the relatively few. Times of Israel recently did a good uh, documentary called three part video documentary called the State of Jerusalem, and one of the parts was secular Jerusalem. And they're making the point that in Jerusalem nowadays, there really aren't secular neighborhoods. There's only ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods, so-called Haredi neighborhoods, and then there's mixed neighborhoods of 
ultra-Orthodox and regular Orthodox. So the Jewish population in Jerusalem, by the way, for those curious, according to the latest uh, data from the Jerusalem Policy Research Institute, I may have got the think tank's name slightly wrong, but only slightly. It's a roughly third split. One third ultra-Orthodox, Haredi. One third secular, but even within that secular, many people identify more as traditional. And one third regular Orthodox, which is in Hebrew, Dati, Dati Leomi, National Orthodox and Regular Orthodox. So it's a 3 3 3 split. And then you've got 30% of the city are Palestinians, Makhdi Sin in Arabic, the East Jerusalemites. So it's an interesting. Um, Interesting city, so it's two-thirds, roughly two-thirds Jewish, one-third Palestinian. Within the Jewish, then, you've got a three-way split. And actually just cross over the road here so we don't get the sun. Not only is it, uh, not only is it going to make the video hard to watch, it's actually just hurting my eyes, I didn't bring out sunglasses. So this is the construction happening absolutely everywhere in Jerusalem at the moment. Uh, I don't know what exactly they're building here. Residential buildings in uh, the German colony, I guess. So there's a lot of criticism over this construction that, you know, it's inconvenient for locals and it's mostly luxury housing that's going to be out of their financial reach anyway. See if I can go into selfie mode for a second. Oh, you can. So here's me taking my afternoon stroll through Jerusalem here. I'm gonna go back now to regular mode. That is quite nifty. This is the Femi Pam 2 pocket gimbal I'm using to record these videos on. Uh, I intend upgrading to the Osmo Pocket or Pocket 2 or uh, something else entirely. DJ, I've just come out with a really cool new product. Anyway, I won't complete subjects. I won't talk about camera stuff in a video about Jerusalem, but uh, this is what I'm using. Little, little handheld tool. Very, very cool device. Okay, so seeing as we've now done the German colony for the most part, there's still those placards, uh, but I'm not going to stop for this one. We're going to next be going up to, hopefully there'll be less people on the road. And then we'll be going through the back of Talpio, which is like this kind of industrial, I don't want to call it an industrial wasteland, certainly not a very beautiful part of town. Um, anyway, that's what is coming up next. I'm going to just jump slightly off the trail again, probably best not to record right outside of school is what's there apparently, so. <sighs> the next street we're going to intersect with here is going to be Pierre Koenig Street, which I actually did a video about before. It's like the main thoroughfare running through Tapiot, leading down to the Hadar Mall, which I also did a video of before. So that's going to be the next crossing here. So I'm going to just take a breather for a few minutes and uh, let the scenery speak.
Okay, so this is Pierre Kenning Street that we're coming up to now. And on the right is Emek Rifaim, which is like the main uh, commercial street in the German colony. So once you get to the other side of the street, we've kind of left. Well, this is really the border between the German colony and Talpiot, in fact, right here on the street. To the left is Talpiot. These are probably schools or something. And to the right is uh, Emek Rifaim, and which is the uh, I'm just going to actually turn the camera in here for a second to see if you can see a microfilm. This is a street sign, and that's I'm a curfew the German colony leading down there. Some restaurants on it, stuff like that. Nice place. Okay. So we've crossed Pierre Kennick Street now. This is like the walking section the actual, on the actual train tracks, and this is for the bicycles there. And I mean, the coexistence stuff is you know, there, there's always going to be that strain because of these political developments. So it's not that I'm skeptical that it doesn't exist to an extent, but I think to ever to a significant extent in Jerusalem. The seven years I've been living in the city, I haven't seen much evidence of significant coexistence. There are certainly coexistence initiatives like the Yad Fiyad, Yad Fiyad school, which you know co-educates in Hebrew and Arabic. But on a day-to-day -day basis, of people from East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem, they do work together. But uh, more sub significant integration beyond, you know, working relationships. I don't see much evidence of. I think it's really hard for any real coexistence to take hold in this kind of a political climate, unfortunately. But nevertheless, you do see um, Palestinians who live in it's a Fafa, which we're going to be straddling next, walking here on the Jewish Sabbat. In fact, just saw a lady pass wearing a hijab. So you do see a mix, mixing of people, but it's more like people kind of keeping to them themselves, their own worlds. Okay, anyway, we're now going through the back of Talpio, now that we've crossed through the front of Talpio. Um, and we're going to be passing this kind of industrial building. Talpio, as I mentioned in the video I did about um, Pierre Koenig, is really kind of filled with uh, DIY stores and factories and it's kind of a useful place to do shopping but it's kind of ugly and the Jerusalem municipality has plans to make it into a kind of second urban centre for Jerusalem so that place that we started out in the first station is kind of a first sort of an urban centre for South Jerusalem I mean it's a complex essentially but there's um, plans to make Talpiot something more significant. Um, right now, besides that, those kind of factories, it's pretty residential. So apparently this is like seven kilometers or something of that nature. See folks taking their jogs here. got to get used to using this uh, Femi in public, literally everybody stops and stares like what the hell is that? Such an unusual looking device. You 
can definitely get some good exercise. I'm looking at the timer on my camera here. It says I've been going for 25 minutes already. It doesn't feel like that to me. But uh, don't doubt it. I'm going to just... Uh, so this site here is going to be Tapio coming up here. Uh, 21 minutes on the clock. There's some really beautiful buildings along the tracks. I'm not sure exactly who owns them, but you'll see some like incredible backyards. Some nice little parkland here. Pretty decent amount of parks in Jerusalem. If you like walking, it's a relatively city with some decent amount of green spaces. So where we're walking through currently, I guess, is considered South Jerusalem and Beit Safafa, despite being an Arabic city. Actually, we're going to go through the Green Line at some point. So. Uh, off my phone so I can show you guys a market timestamp on the video for what crossing a border looks like but it's actually kind of a joke because the green line is essentially invisible in the West Bank where Israel builds actually I don't think we're, no we're not gonna hit the green line on this walk um, in the West Bank where Israel builds the barrier it's generally next to the green line but there are places you can cross it in Jerusalem and uh, it is there's no physical demarcation, it's just a line on, Google, on the map and Google Maps has it as well. So there's really nothing to see, it'll just look like this. But I'll nevertheless announce the moment of crossing the contested green line and into officially internationally considered annexed territory. So that'll be an event. So we're coming up to apparently on the right, according to Google Maps, I just took note, took note, took note of my location. Gun N, this is another one of these kind of, then there's Bait Vagan. Uh, these are all just kind of residential neighborhoods in South Jerusalem. It's kind of sprawling and pretty boring for the most part. They're all kinds of look, all kinds of look, all kind of looks like this. You know, four or five story apartment buildings, some green patches, etc. Beit Safafa is next um, with the now contested mosque there. Oh, one thing I didn't point out yet. These are public reading libraries. These little things are modeled after bus stops. They're uh, Tachanot Kriya. I think I've done a video about them too, actually. Before we get to Beit Safafa, we're going to be coming to the back of Rami Levy, a grocery store. That's what this is, just for the books you can borrow in different languages, you can see here. This one actually, I believe, was burnt down. So uh, it's now, I've got those signs saying that it's CCTV and you've got some little playgrounds over here as well. It's pretty nice. So more signs. Let's read this one. View from the tra train on the way to Bitter, which is now called Batter these days. Uh, Batter is an area B in the PA and it's famous for its ancient terraces. That train, the, the old train from Jerusalem, has actually been retired, I recently learned. So now there's a fast train, the one from the new station in Jerusalem called Yitzhak Navon, which is one of the deepest train stations in the world. I believe the third after Moscow and somewhere else and that's now the train to Tel Aviv and up until very recently there was a sort of 
obscure train running from Malka to Tel Aviv and that went through Batir and it was a really really beautiful train it's actually a great pity I didn't get to do it um, before they stopped running it there's no reason to have it running it was also very long it was like an hour and a half so now that the fast train is running there was absolutely no reason to have a redundant and slower train even if it was scenic so presumably you know whatever passenger figures they had just completely dropped off this is Rami Levy this is a grocery store kind of like Walmart and this is the Rami Levy in Talpiot this is essentially what all Talpiot looks like it's, as he said not very beautiful but uh, I do think that it would be a great uh, second urban centre for Jerusalem or third depending upon how you look at it Next now is for real Beit Safafa. Ah, oh, you can actually see the dome of the Al Rahman Mosque from here. Quite, uh, quite impressive. I was told that it's not the only copycat, if you will, of the uh, Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Apparently in uh, other neighbourhoods in East Jerusalem, they've gone with the same kind of a uh, thing. That's all you can see it there, just over the bridge. It's in the news at the moment because of the demolition order and the local residents are open arms about it. Right-wing organisations are have been lobbying the municipality. Um, saying it's a symbol to terrorism, seems to be exaggerated. The original 100 centimeter gauge line was single to right. It was once thought that this track was obtained from the railway building connection to the original Panama Canal. This is disproved by the fact the railway's bayer, the stamped letters JJ, Jaffa to Jerusalem, together with the name of the manufacturer and often the year they were made. So you can actually just really see that. Let me go here. So this is definitely original track. About that. About that I'm sure. Before we get to Beit Safafa and its soccer field and the contested mosque, we're going to see some really interesting graffiti that's going to be coming up on the left. And this actually really goes through Beit Safafa, so it's like you get to see up close what it looks like in the neighbourhood. It doesn't actually go in it, but it goes through it. And this is coming up to about where I got stopped before by construction sites. We'll see how much further one can get. Perhaps they finished the overpass they were working on. Perhaps not. I have been told by people I'm a fast walker. I don't know if that's... Eh, I'm keeping up a decent pace. So I might take a little bit. I'm 30 minutes or so in. I'll see how long it takes me the whole thing. If you're a slow walker, add a little bit of time to that. more uh, storefronts here in Talpiot. I think that's how Uman Street in the background. Not much to say about it, just more shopping centres and whatnot. This is the overpass just before Beit Safafa, Moshe Baram Street in Talpiot. Just like the divider, divider informally between Bitsafaf and Tapiot, it's under this flyover that you'll see the uh, or overpass, whatever it's called. You'll see the colourful graffiti. People are walking their dogs here, so they're on leashes, which is always something uh, I appreciate.
Oh, the sun is really, really bright. Coming up to the mosque now. There's the graffiti. That is the Al Rahman Mosque, the dome there. The one that Jerusalem now wants to has issued a demolition order for because it's apparently legally constructed alongside the top floor of the mosque. It's one of four mosques. And Beit Safafa actually predates the, the state. And coming up on the left is the soccer field of Beit Safafa. I'm going to just go in because it's kind of uh, topical at the moment. This is the soccer field, as you can see. Really, really big soccer field. That's the mosque. So, specifically, the dome, I think Israel is taking issue with. It's that in the news, the top floor as well. So, it's quite imposing, can be seen from all over the road. And that's the soccer pitch. I'm not going to stop uh, much along here just because, in fact, the sun is going down. So, I'm going to get back on the, on the trail. Or in Beit Safafa now. It's another one of the reading stations. This one says Beit Safafa reading station in memory of Baha Adin Down Dawood Al Uyid. Park is lit. I'm not surprised the lights haven't come on yet. So you can walk it at night time too, which is nice. Definitely changes tempo as you go through Beit Safafa. It's kind of less parky, more running through neighborhood. It's a really creative project. I like how it varies, varies up. So where it gets a little bit confusing, you just have to kind of follow the lines here. I feel like it needs a couple of signposts, but it's, this is the park track, I believe, continued. Yep.
Now we're starting to see the high-rise towers of Malka in the distance, including the famously, some would say, disastrous Holy Land project. You can read about that in the online newspapers. Big high-rise complex and people, there you see it right there, just left of the tree. Right next to the uh, Malka high-tech park. Some people would say it's an eyesore. So this is still bits of Fafa, you can tell by the distinctive construction style the houses here. Finally we're getting away from uh, humanity, getting some space here. It's a bit less, uh, it's got less credit. These little things are um, Pesukim I believe, it's like verses from the, the Bible. But Yom Rishon, Hashivu Hazah. Ah, no, it's not. It's actually a nice time of day to do this. Lighting is very pretty. And that is Teddy Stadium, you can see on the left. So the football stadium. Also actually used, um, I'm not sure the stadium itself or what was the stadium for the coronavirus? They use public vaccines, they use public buildings. It's a very impressive effort. For almost 40 minutes on the clock now, so it's a really decent walk. Map says we are. Let's see the green line is just about twenty meters on the left of where this uh, section of the track goes. So that's how close it is in Jerusalem. Thank you, the Yad the Yad coexistence school is just uh, just there. Ah, this is further than I got last time. It's good. Exploring new territory. This is where I was stopped because it was a uh, construction site. Now we're at another point where again it's a little bit less clear exactly where the park is where we're going. And you're going with the flow. Nice uh, playground here.
guy is uh, training over there. Hi, Serena there. Looks like sundown's already happened. Well, I mean, or is happening. Sunset, I should say. Take uh, another one of these playgrounds here. This is after Pice, that is Teddy Arena. Teddy Stadium. Bethlehem is just over the south barrier of the houses there before Bethlehem. Forty-four minutes coming up to now, according to my timer. Handy having a camera as a stopwatch. I think it's fair to say this is the end uh, because it just kind of stops here there's residential neighborhoods here the bike path stops right there uh, maybe there's a little bit more we'll see that's kind of sad we can join that you don't to, it is supposed to terminate kind of here and you can probably go a little bit further on a continuation but I think this little patch of green here it stopped looking like a public park and it started just looking like a regular neighborhood so I think we can call that the end of Park Emma's yeah so uh, I'm gonna turn back now I think that was a good uh, decent walk hope this was an enjoyable uh, video to flick through or whatever you did with the video and uh, if you want to get more videos like this, please feel free to uh, subscribe, as always, to this YouTube channel. If there's someone going back in the other direction now, there's somewhere uh, of interest you want to see in Jerusalem, then drop me a comment on any of these videos. And uh, depending upon my schedule, etc., etc., I'll try and make it happen. Uh, next video coming soon.